Hey guys, Spina Dude here, and today we're going to be taking a look at another brand new 2018 Safari Limited figure for the hashtag HowISafari campaign. So let's have our co host Marvin bring it out. Thank you, Marvin. So today, guys, we are going to be taking a look at this. It is the brand new Safari Limited Anzu. If you've been staying tuned to the channel, you'll remember that we had an unboxing video of the first batch of Safari Limited's 2018 prehistoric life figurines, and included in that batch was this brand new Oviraptorosaur figure. As always, a massive thank you to Safari Limited for sending this figure out. I cannot wait to take a closer look at it. So without further ado, guys, let's dive into the review. Before we take a closer look at the figure, here are a few quick facts about Anzu itself. Anzu Wiley is named after a mythical creature in Sumerian and Akkadian mythology. It was an oviraptorosaur from the Cretaceous period of what is now the United States of America. Anzu was recently described back in 2014 and is a close relative of the famous oviraptor. The unique crest on its head is thought to have been used for display purposes, similar to its modern-day relatives, the birds. Anzu was discovered in the Hell Creek Formation, the same dig site where dinosaur superstars Tyrannosaurus Rex and Triceratops were unearthed. So without further ado guys, let's start taking a closer look at this awesome Oviraptorosaur. So here is the brand new 2018 Safari Limited Anzu. And let me just say for first impressions here, this little figure has a ton of detail packed into it as you can see. And the colors and everything just come together and make it overall just stunning. Now this particular dinosaur is an interesting choice for Safari Limited to create because it could have been easy for them just to remake their Oviraptor from the Carnegie collection or something, but I'm really happy that they decided to go with an animal that to my knowledge has not been attempted to be made into figure form by any other company. The detail on this Anzu figurine is absolutely gorgeous. I mean just look at those feathers carved out into the sculpts there, each of them are individually done across the body. If we look from the top there, just look at that beautiful pattern that they create going down the back. It has a nice feel to the touch as well, and I'm really happy that they decided to go with this different pattern of feathers on the back, because it would have been easier for them just to do this pattern here that's on the legs and the neck for example. The wings on this sculpt are absolutely gorgeous as you can see. The primary and secondary feathers are present and such, and I love the color blending here. Also, the wings are applied correctly to the hands. As you can see, the wings are connected to the middle digit on the Anzu's hands there. And the hands are beautifully done as well. They are done in a gray color with some black claws. And you can see the other two digits underneath the wings that have been carved out there. The legs and feet are beautifully done as well. And they have accurate proportions to the body. Unlike some of Safari's really old figures where they tended to make very large feet on their figurines for stability reasons, but on the Enzu the feet are correctly sized here as you can see. Now I really like the tail fan on this figurine here, it's absolutely beautiful and it's so unique in comparison to Safari's other feathered dinosaur figures. You can see the red area here on the tail is bushy almost and then we have these long blue stiff feathers coming out from there. And there's a look at the fan from the underside of the tail. Here's a closer look at the head on this Anzu figurine and you can see just how bird-like this looks. I love the mixing of the colors here. You can see the eye has been done in a yellow color with a black ring around it and the pupil is done in black as well. The crest which connects to the beak is done in a gray color and the interior of the mouth has been detailed in a fleshy pink color although it is sort of hard to see in there and the nostrils have been carved out on the front of the beak there as you can see. I love the natural flow of the feathers across the body as well. It really just brings this figure to life. Also, I love the toned musculature in the legs especially. You can really tell that this animal is on the move. Now one of my favorite parts of this figure has to be its bold color scheme, and I'm really fond of the bird-like colors here on this Anzu. You can see that the main body of this Anzu is done in a bright green color with some red highlights. The head is done in red, which then transitions into the main green on the body. The throat, which goes all the way down the neck and into the lower chest area, is done in white. And the tips of the wings and the tail fan are done in a blue color. 
Also, there is a small paint mistake I thought I'd point out on this figure. I'm not sure if it's just on mine or if it's in all of the production samples, but if you look on this wing here, you can see that the red stops right before this green part on the front of the wing. If we flip over to this wing, you can see that the red continues down into this green part of the wing. So if I continually flip them over, you can see the difference in the coloration with the red on the wings there. I'm not sure which side I like better. I like the posing of this wing better, but I think I like the continuation of the red color on this wing over here. Now the pose on this figure is quite dynamic, but it's not too stable. You can see that this Anzu appears to be sprinting, perhaps away from a predator or something. Now although this figure's pose looks quite dynamic and naturalistic, it isn't too stable like I said. Even if I slightly rock the figurine there, as you can see, it will tip over. It is quite heavy on the right side of the animal here. There are a few different ways for you to stand this figure, however. The first one here, as you can see, is where it is just standing on its flat feet like it's intended to. I did have to find the sweet spot with this one, though. Depending on the surface and the level of where you're displaying this figurine, it does have a tendency to lean on its left wing like this, however. But on my review table, it does have a tendency to lean more towards its right. You can also rock it over to lean on its tail like so. Perhaps this would be cool for dioramas if a predator was ambushing it from this side or something. I'm sure this model's stability will differ figure to figure, but perhaps I just got one that's a little more unstable than the rest. All right, so for my overall thoughts on this figure, I think it is absolutely fantastic. When it comes to making feathered dinosaur figures as of recently, Safari Limited seems to be knocking the ball out of the park every single time. This Anzu figure is absolutely gorgeous, and it's great to see that Safari Limited has chose to do another more obscure species. I think the sculpt, the detail, and the color scheme are all equally good, but I think my ultimate favorite part of this figure have to be the fully feathered wings and this beautiful pattern of individually carved feathers on the back of the animal here. So great job Safari Limited, you have done a phenomenal job recreating the Anzu. So you're probably wondering just how big this figure is, so Marvin, bring out the ruler. Thank you, Marvin. All right, we've got our trusty flexi ruler now, so let's give this Anzu a measure. So in terms of the length from the tip of the beak all the way to the tip of the tail fan, we are looking at about five inches. And in terms of the height at the highest point, which is the top of the head crest here, we are looking at about three inches. For comparison, here is the Safari Limited Anzu next to the Safari Limited Feathered Velociraptor. If you want to see the review for this figure, link will be down below in the description. These two gorgeous feathered dinosaurs display spectacular detail, and I think they look absolutely great next to each other, although they are out of scale. Up next for comparison, here's the Safari Limited Anzu next to the Safari Limited Cassowary. If you want to see the review for this figure, link will be down below in the description. The crest shape of this bird is almost identical to that of the ancient Oviraptorosaur here. And you can definitely see how these two animals are related. And finally for comparison, here is the Safari Limited Anzu next to the Safari Limited Feathered Tyrannosaurus Rex. If you want to see the review for this figure, link will be down below in the description. T-Rex and Anzu actually coexisted with each other in the Cretaceous period of the Hell Creek Formation. And these two models scale up to each other really nicely and have gorgeous color schemes and updated sculpts that complement each other nicely as well. Well, there we go, guys. That was today's look at the brand new 2018 Safari Limited Anzu. I think this figure is absolutely fantastic. Like I said earlier in the video, Safari Limited has been nailing feathered dinosaurs the past couple years, and I think this is a great addition to their collection. If you're a fan of feathered, colorful dinosaurs and obscure dinosaur species, I definitely recommend adding this one to your collection. So if you guys want to get this figure for yourself, head on over to www. Dot safari limited dot com. And if you guys want to learn more about the hashtag Hawaii Safari campaign, make sure to check out Safari's Facebook page and other social media. So anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. Also leave a comment down below telling me what you think of this Anzu figure. So thank you so much guys for watching, and as always I will see you in my next video. Take care, and bye bye